Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Self Made, Grant Thompson here. In this video, I thought it'd be fun just to sit down, have a casual chat, and let you know how I got started on YouTube. I wanted to give you a little bit of perspective on my life. I've been very frugal, penny pincher, and I've always been very conservative about money. So when I got started on YouTube, I was looking for the ways to do it as frugally as possible, to say it nicely. What is the cheapest way that I could get into this? How could I do it with very low overhead risk? Because if it didn't work out, um, I didn't want to have too much invested into it. And I also want to mention that when I got into YouTube, I wasn't doing it as a career option. I was just doing it because I saw potential and I wanted to flirt with it and see what came of it. So getting started on YouTube, really it's an easy business. There's really two things that you need and that is a camera to record your video and some kind of a computer to edit and upload your video to YouTube. And nowadays with smartphones, you can actually do a lot of that on the phone itself. But the way that I got started was um, I went on Amazon. I found a Canon T3i uh, camera. It was about $450. I got the 1855 lens and when it came, I didn't know how to use it. So I got one of my neighbors who was a photographer basically just to show me how to operate it. It was a very frustrating camera to use because I had to frame up every shot manually and adjust all my studio lights and every single frame um, that, I, that I shot was focused at about a 1.5 f-stop, which you know, means I only had about a half inch depth of field. So every time I was moving something, I'd have to make sure I came in on focus and it took me a lot of takes, you know, 20, 30 takes per hand movement to try and get that uh, footage that I was looking for. Uh, the computer, uh, I went back and forth, you know, do I want to get a PC or do I want to get a Mac? I'd never used Mac before ever, um, but I reached out to some people I knew like Devin Graham and um, some other video producers and all of them came back saying, you know, Mac's the way you want to go. Uh, ultimately, they, they have good processing power, people like them, it's what's used in the industry and if you have to pay a little bit more but it saves you all the headache of crashing computers and um, you know, re-rendering is probably worth it. So I agreed with them. Uh, I went ahead and made the decision to get a Mac, but I didn't want to buy them new because it was about $3,000. So I went on the classified ads and I'd found someone who had just bought a computer three months before. He thought he was gonna do some video editing and some wedding videos, but ended up going into the military and his girlfriend had moved away, so he didn't have a need for the computer. He ended up taking a loss to sell it to me. So I got a $3,000 system for $2,000. So my total investment at this point was about 2,500 bucks, which wasn't too bad. The next thing I was told that I needed was good audio quality. I needed some kind of a microphone. So I looked into microphones and I found one that was about $150 for the microphone and then a little preamp recorder that was about another 80 to hundred dollars. You can get them at Best Buy. They're just little audio recorders that uh, a microphone plugs into. At the time I spent quite a bit of money. And you see now I just use these little $20 mics from Best Buy and the reason is because I start off with pretty expensive microphone now you can just see I use these little $20 mics from Best Buy they're not super attractive but they work really well and the uh, little recorder that I use um, was about $80 to $100 as well you can get this uh, at Best Buy or you know off Amazon just hold that up so you can see how this is plugged in so I'm literally just taking the audio through this microphone running it to this recorder and I'll sync that up with the footage later but this is the cheaper version of what I was using before. And the reason I use it now is because uh, it, the audio quality is great. And honestly, on YouTube, I don't think anybody has ever made a comment once about this microphone on my shirt sticking out like this. So quality, you know, there is something to be said about quality, but I think the audio quality speaks a lot more than video quality in, in a lot of respects. So let's talk about YouTube itself. How did I get started on YouTube? Well, at the time, I was looking at all the YouTube channels that were popular. There were a couple big channels uh, in my realm of interest, namely Kip K and Household Hacker. And these were DIY channels, guys that like to make things, hack things, reconfigure things. And that was really interesting to me. And these guys had professional logos. They had these awesome graphics at the beginning of their videos. They looked like they knew what they were doing as far as production went. So I started looking into how I could do this myself. It took a bit of research, but I found uh, I could use programs like Adobe Edition, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. Those three systems um, to help edit my audio, to help edit my video, and to help create motion graphics that looked really cool. There's also a couple of websites that I used, audiohive.net and audiojungle.net, I believe. Audio Jungle gives you royalty-free background music for the videos, and then Audio Hive gives you templates that you can use. So I took, I took my logo, which I designed in Photoshop, 
put it into one of these templates for After Effects, and that's how I got my initial uh, logo sting for the King of Random. It was this ball that would appear, and it would kind of rotate around, and then I'd have the King of Random appear at the bottom. So that was from a $12 template that I purchased from After Effects and then did some tweaking on my own. So at this point, I had a cool little logo sting, I had some background music, I had uh, some good computer equipment, and so then I just went to work trying to make the most professional videos that I could. And from day one, I wanted my videos my very first video to look almost as good as it would a year later. So I really put a lot of work into building a format that was consistent, that would push back to other videos, and then I just started running with it. I started publishing my very first King of Random style video in April 2012, and it was the Mega Solar Scorcher, the one where I went and got a big TV, pulled the lens off of it, and made it into a giant magnifying glass. The second video was the candy cannon. The third video was how to make electricity with pennies. The fourth video was burning stuff with that giant magnifying glass. And then I just kept putting out a video every single week indefinitely. I've never stopped. In fact, we've always put out a video every week since. So how did I balance this with family life and paying the bills? So at the time, I actually had a career. I was an airline pilot, and I had enough seniority that I could work a schedule flying at night and then come back during the day and actually work on my videos. So a really cool schedule. I'd tuck my kids into bed, I'd go to the airport, I'd fly only a 20 or 30 minute flight to the next city, go to the hotel, spend about six hours in bed, get up the next morning, fly the first flight back, and I'd get home just in time to see my kids get out of bed. So as far as they were concerned, I never left, and then I had the whole rest of the day to work on videos. So I really was like working around the clock, and uh, I started getting purple bags under my eyes, and people would comment about that, thinking that I was on drugs. It really was just a lack of sleep. So ultimately, I, uh, I didn't appear in my videos. I just kept my hands in the videos, doing the projects looking down, and I stayed out of it myself because of those types of comments. So if you do the math on all the equipment, I spent about $3,000 between the editing software, my microphone, my computer, and my camera. But at this point, I had a system developed. I was putting out regular content, and um, I had a plan. And my plan for YouTube wasn't to become a big famous YouTube celebrity. It wasn't to build a career around YouTube. My plan was this. I wanted to make 100 videos of how to do random things that I couldn't find being taught in schools, mainly because I was interested in learning about them. And as I learned about them, I wanted to make videos documenting the process that I could share with others so that they could follow along and see how I arrived at that conclusion. 100 videos was my plan. It took me a little over two and a half years to make those 100 videos, but my resolve was whether or not I got any subscribers, whether or not I made any money doing it, I was committed to make 100 videos, and only at that point I would take the blinders off and I would look at what was happening and determine whether or not it was worth continuing. So pretty much the rest is history. You know, it only took until about 50 videos before my channel popped up on the radar. Uh, I passed 50,000 subscribers after about six months. My wife got me a bouquet of barbecue igniters to celebrate. And two weeks later, we passed 100,000 subscribers and it's just kept growing ever since. Currently today, we have over 9 million subscribers. I've uh, been away from the airlines for the last two years and YouTube has become a full-time career and now I'm in a position where I've even automated this system that I could step away from it and pass these tips and techniques on to you here in the self-made course. So in the last seven years, I've experimented with all different ways to do YouTube video production and I've also gone from knowing absolutely nothing you know, I have no school or formal training in video production whatsoever, but uh, to this point now where we've been able to utilize YouTube as a platform to make it a very viable career option. So self-made is basically, in a nutshell, the fastest way that I can think of going from point A to where we're at right now. And we want to give that to you because uh, I feel like shortcuts are valuable. I feel like we've done it. We've cracked a lot of codes, and it's really pointless if I don't pass that on. So this is our way of paying it forward. We've got a link down in the description if you want to learn more about our self-made training. And uh, if you have any other questions or comments, of course, you can leave those below. We'll take your feedback. We'll make more videos, and uh, we'll take your suggestions to give you answers to whatever it is you need to know. We're here to use as a resource. Thanks for picking our brain. And uh, I think that's what gives us passion and purpose right now. So that's in a nutshell how to get started on YouTube, guys. You really don't need much. In this day and age, you could really just do it with your phone. Content is king. You notice I don't use flashy intros anymore. It was cool. It served its purpose when I was getting started. A little bit uh, later into it, I didn't need it so much, so I've just pretty much cut those out. You can definitely make YouTube a viable career option, and we're here to help.